Good morning. This is Bill Zoller with the Wellness Warriors Ministry, and we're going to start off uh, 2016 with a video about dietary protein. We're going to talk about dietary protein and what some of the major issues are uh, with that. Um, so why is it important? Well, it's important to be able to distinguish between animal protein and plant protein. We'll attempt to do that. Uh, and to clear up some of the confusion about how much animal protein is safe for our health. And uh, we, we observe also that there seems to be uh, in our culture, and indeed throughout the Western world now, an obsession with protein uh, uh, and how much we're getting and uh, how much is safe to use. Uh, so we, uh, we seek accurate information about this and, uh, uh, and uh, today, we also uh, want to mention that, that uh, protein is important, very important. It is a building block uh, uh, of uh, many uh, different uh, tissues in our bodies, including our hair and our nails and our tendons. It's a building block in enzymes uh, and in hemoglobin and in antibodies and, and much more. But just because uh, a protein plays such a central role, it does not follow that more is better. As a matter of fact, uh, some uh, scientists believe that uh, too much animal protein leads to a whole variety of diseases like uh, kidney disease, cancer, osteoporosis, and so on. There are several difficulties with animal protein, including containing many toxins. Secondly, it has no fiber like plant foods have, no fiber with a lot of health implications around that. Thirdly, uh, it has no healing plant compounds like we find in plant foods. All of those are missing from animal protein. Animal protein tends to be high in uh, saturated fat and cholesterol. Next, some of the um, uh, amino acids in, uh, uh, in animal foods like methionine uh, end up uh, being uh, quite problematic. And finally, uh, in animal protein, we get a lot of insulin growth factor 1, IGF-1, uh, which is a growth hormone uh, implicated uh, in uh, cancer cell growth. I uh, wanted to say that Dr. T. Colin Campbell, who is a, uh, I think a world-renowned nutritional biochemist from Cornell University, uh, says that his research finds that we only need about 5 to 10 percent of our daily calories in protein, not the 30 to 60 percent, which is a very common uh, goal for uh, many people in the Western world. He also says, and I quote, in my view, no chemical carcinogen is nearly so important in causing human cancer as animal protein. A, uh, a profound uh, statement there. Uh, so um, uh, many people uh, believe that um, uh, only animal protein can provide us with the needed essential amino acids and that you must eat a lot of animal protein to have adequate uh, amino acids. The reality, however, is not that. The, the reality is that you can get all of your essential amino acids that you need in a varied uh, diet of beans and lentils and grains and vegetables uh, as long as you're uh, consuming enough calories. Uh, in our metabolic uh, system, we have a, an interesting component called the uh, labile amino acid pool. And uh, through this uh, uh, mechanism, uh, Individual amino acids are selected and put to use in the body in the correct place uh, as they are needed, uh, which I, I thought was just a, a fascinating uh, uh, part of our metabolism. To wrongly suggest that people need to eat animal protein for proper nutrition encourages the consumption of foods that contribute to a whole plethora of chronic diseases, including diabetes and heart disease, and cancer and some other uh, uh, conditions also. I want to say a few words now about toxins uh, from animal foods. C. diff, a bacterium 
that can cause symptoms ranging from diarrhea to life-threatening inflammation uh, and colon problems is found in processed meats. E. coli, specifically E. coli 0157, is found in, uh, in ground beef and can lead to severe abdominal cramps, bloody diarrhea, and vomiting. Chemicals like ammonia, chlorine, and parasitic acid are frequently employed, used to kill aggressive bacteria in meat and poultry. MRSA, a staph bacteria, um, is uh, found in some pork, beef, and chicken. Arsenic is used in animal feed. Fish and animal products um, can expose us to persistent pollutants like DDT, dioxins, and heavy metals, and this compromises our uh, autoimmune system. PCBs are stored in fat and may never be fully uh, excreted from our bodies. These are industrial chemicals. They can build up in fish and in animal fat. Arsenic and mercury we find uh, commonly in seafood. Sequatera toxin tends to accumulate in predator fish. Cooking, cooking does not destroy the toxin and uh, this uh, toxin uh, leads to nausea, pain, cardiac and neurological symptoms. Uh, a, uh, another word about methionine that I had referred to earlier. This is a sulfur-based amino acid. It causes bad breath, body odor, foul-smelling gas. The, the point is that methionine is, metaboli is metabolized into homocysteine uh, that um, is a known risk factor for heart attacks, stroke, um, blood clots, Alzheimer's disease, depression, and, uh, and so on. So where is methionine found? Particularly in chicken and fish, but also in milk and red meat and eggs. Uh, if you want to stick with lower methi methionine foods, eat fruits, nut, ve nuts, vegetables, grains, and beans. Uh, in poultry, we find a good deal of arsenic, uh, leading to risk of lung and bladder cancer. Uh, also in poultry, it's interesting to note that 100 milligrams of cholesterol uh, found in four ounces of chicken is the same amount found in beef. Uh, <clears throat> the United States and UK adults are already eating 40 to 50 percent more protein than needed on average. And uh, so we uh, have concern about primary prevention of disease because of this. In dairy, we find a lot of lead, some banned pesticides, and dioxins. Uh, uh, consumption of dairy products, cheese, milk, and so on, uh, increases this insulin growth factor one that I had mentioned. It weakens bones due to a high acidic load and leaches calcium uh, from the uh, bones. Uh, dairy also uh, contains an enzyme called TOR. T O R, uh, and this is uh, from animal protein that accelerates the aging process. Not a good thing. Uh, dairy is an endocrine signaling system that activates TOR and promotes cell growth. And uh, our concern uh, is uh, uh, the proliferation of prostate cancer cells and probably cells from other types of cancer also. Um, so what kinds of foods might inhibit or limit this, uh, this uh, TOR enzyme? Well, things like broccoli and green tea and fruits and vegetables and a whole variety of berries and the skin of cucumber. So when I uh, juice my uh, cucumbers or when I eat my cucumbers, I uh, certainly leave on the uh, skin. Uh, kidney disease. So uh, the Western diet is a major factor in the onset of kidney disease. It causes impaired kidney blood flow, inflammation, and leakage of protein into the urine. A six-month double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled 
research study looked at soy versus dairy protein. And what happened is that whole soy foods like edamame and soybeans uh, tended to preserve kidney function while uh, milk uh, and other dairy products did just the opposite and, and uh, they saw kidney function decline. A couple of uh, more uh, specific ideas uh, that we need to know about IGF-1, insulin growth factor 1. When you lower the fat in milk or any other dairy product, you automatically raise the level of protein. This raises blood levels of IGF-1, which increases the risk of cancer and accelerates aging. <clears throat> high, high protein, low carb diets are problematic. Uh, we have hundreds of highly respected research studies that document this. Um, these diets limit the health promoting components, what we call phytonutrients, in complex carbohydrate foods such as greens and beans. I um, wanted to mention another study of over 4,800 people that found high animal protein causes inflammation and high blood pressure. Also, we have um, a solid research uh, indicating that diets that are high in fruits, vegetables, and starchy, uh, uh, starchy complex carbohydrates help to keep people slim and trim. Um, uh, also, I want to mention that the onset of MINARC, the uh, onset of the periods for the young ladies, uh, uh, if you eat a lot of animal protein, uh, uh, it's associated with a significant risk of starting their periods earlier than uh, age uh, 12, and part of this is due to IGF-1. So our recommendations is that uh, we be uh, very uh, cautious uh, about consuming animal foods, that is the amount of animal foods, and that we do that with the full knowledge that there are very significant health risks involved. Uh, also avoid refined carbohydrates such as sweets and pasta and breads. Those are just as bad for us as the saturated fat in animal foods. Uh, we uh, recommend that people uh, uh, go to restaurants and utilize restaurants very cautiously uh, because they are generally not very uh, concerned about our health and they don't know a lot about, uh, they don't know a lot about nutrition and they serve a lot of uh, unhealthy uh, animal-based uh, foods. Uh, we recommend that in your home that you have at least one person who knows how to prepare very uh, good, healthy, uh, whole food, plant-based uh, 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 dishes that are delicious. And, uh, and finally, we recommend that if you uh, choose to eat uh, some animal foods or processed foods, that this be not more than 5 to 10 percent of your daily uh, calories. We uh, thank you for being with us today and we urge you to stay in touch with us uh, on our website at mywellnesswarriors.com and to also uh, interact with us on Facebook uh, at William Zoller. Thank you so much.